So today we're going to be talking about neuroplasticity. And uh, but before we get started, I'd love to kind of just get some foundational information on some of the terms. So what is neuroplasticity? Well, that's a great question uh, and a perfect one to start off with, because a lot of people think that neuroplasticity is forming new neurons uh, when, in fact, it's actually just the process of learning. So it's connecting neurons that are already there. And so we talk about making more synapses. And synapses means nothing other than just the junction between neurons so that we can learn how to integrate and synthesize information that we've learned, whether that's fact-based information or even movement-based information. And I should also include sensory information. So to summarize, neuroplasticity is just the process by which we form new connections. We call those synapses in learning. When I think of the idea so of neuroplasticity, and, and I think of our community of people with Parkinson's, um, I'll often get, well, what's the point? Uh, you know, I, I already have Parkinson's, it's already degenerative, like not really, is anything really gonna be able to happen? So what do you, what is somebody who believes in neuroplasticity, what are they really believing in? Um, and then what do these people do that people who don't tend to not do? Yeah, so that's, that is such a lovely question and I'll make certain that I don't go on a long diatribe here. So really neuroplasticity is important for a person with Parkinson disease so that they can slow the disease process, preserve what they have, and make connections that were actually left off the table because of learned non-use. So imagine, once you have the diagnosis of Parkinson disease, there may be some self-fulfilling prophecies, things that you stop doing because you think these things are unsafe or not expected or incapable because now I've labeled myself as a person with Parkinson disease. So Melanie, what's left on the table is learn non-use because you stop taking 5,000 steps per day, stop trying to climb the stairs, stop trying to balance without relying on a walker. Now, all those things may be necessary for you to stay safe, but if you don't challenge those facets and in constant or actually uh, in order, I just mentioned endurance, 5,000 steps a day, strength, trying to ascend stairs, and balance, keeping your faculties negotiated. If you now become a person that stays inactive because you have the label, you've left neuroplasticity on the table for me to still, as a healthcare professional, tap into. So that's why neuroplasticity is important for those three reasons slow disease process, maintain what you've got, and actually tap into things that you left off the table that you didn't even know you had the potential to access.